Hey guys, welcome to Furniture Friday. Today we are finishing last week's dresser. We gotta finish that drawer. We need to put an IOD transfer on it. And I wasn't planning on painting another piece, but yesterday I picked up a dresser. It's a cool dresser. For $37 in Heber. So we're gonna also paint that one and put another transfer. So it's a two for Friday. This is the dresser we're talking about that we did last week. We spayed this in Americana. It's the new cottage colors, one of the three new colors. And this drawer is the one Jamie's talking about. It needs some help. So I think the drawer is actually really sturdy. I don't want to break it apart and redo it. I think I'm just going to cut a quarter inch piece of MDF and drop it down in there. So to get the measurements on this, I'm just going to measure the insides because I don't want it to be exterior. That way it'll just slide right in. That's the only drawer that needs fixed. Everything else is nice and sturdy in there. We probably do need to wipe some of these out again just because they're, they're a little dusty. All right, you want to take all... I don't, let's figure out where we're going to put the transfer and then we'll know which ones we have to take off. Yeah, because I don't know I don't know if we'll need to take these top ones off. I don't, I don't know if the transfer so. will reach up there that big. It's four sheets, right? Yeah. I want to use the Elysium IOD transfer. It looks like this. It's actually more suited for like smaller dresser so i need to lay it out and see how it's going to fit but i think it's not going to cover every single um drawer i'm not sure so when you're doing these this one looks like it goes up in an upper corner like up in the top because the words are right side up this way so you can read it like that that's correct but then the flowers are hanging down so, is that one the same way yeah what does this look like and then this would go on top of it. Okay. Hold okay. So, luckily it's Thursday and we're slow because we're like right in the shop. It was busy earlier. So these line up and match together. So we'll put the bottom ones on first and then make sure it's like centered and then we'll put the top one. So we'll need to get cut this. Actually, oh, this so is this fine. one goes with that there? Yeah. So we'll put this with painter's tape, one piece, and then we'll attach the other piece. You have to do it one at a time so you can puzzle them together. Seriously, we are in front of the door, so if somebody comes in, they're gonna see us working on the floor. You know what? DIY right now, come get your lesson. <laughs> I know, people come in, we're coming in the store earlier and I was like using the brocant transfer on a couple of thrift flips. I'm like, hey, just, you know, doing my job here. <laughs> All right, we're gonna tape that. I'm gonna show Where's you how to do it. I do need the scissors. Oh, I have, okay. We're ready? We're ready. Do not do this in a windy area because if it sticks to itself, you're done. So there's my line. I can see it underneath here. And I want this you... inner one to be the close one. And then I'm just gonna... Put it up as far as you can so that way the bottom of the flowers are on the bottom of the drawer. So it's not like, keep going up. Oh, then I'm like gonna that. lose a little bit of that. It's That's... okay, we can cut it off. If you just tape it in place and we can cut around the knobs that are there. And I'm using the grid to line up with the tops of the drawers so that I'm mostly straight. Okay, committed. So I'm just cutting around this hardware because we decided to not take it off because it's just little teeny pieces. So we're using painter's tape. You don't actually have to. Be careful if you use painter's tape on a fresh finish. Like this is a couple weeks old now at this point, but just gonna use the stick. You can cut each piece to fit the drawers. We just like to do it like this and then whatever sticks in between the drawer sticks. And then we'd use a razor blade if we have to. I'm gonna come in here now that I've got it all lined up and just separate the drawers because Jamie doesn't want to see it past the drawer. She wants it to stop on the drawer and then continue on to the next drawer. No, it's okay if it like goes around the edge. 
Maybe a little. But then it just rips weird sometimes. So if you cut it, then you get more of a straight line. It's better that you do it. Well, that's not a straight line. <laughs> it's It'll be fine. Because we can always distress the edges of the drawer too, but you just want it to be able to release easy. So you do one piece at a time. So now that he's cut it, he's just gonna go around the edge of the drawer and affix it the best he can. All right, first drawer, first drawer is almost done. Oh, that's an amazing corner there. <laughs> Fold it over. Perfect. So what Zeb's doing now is called burnishing and he's just making sure it's attached. All right, so the first uh, corner is on, three more to go. So this beautiful piece, I will put in some footage, but I thrifted it in Heber. It was $50, but I got it 25% off, so it's $37.50. And it's not super old, it has machined dovetailing. The top definitely has some wear to it and it's a veneer. So not solid wood, it's almost like a laminate kind of veneer. Um, but really beautiful dresser and I think it's gonna look gorgeous in crockery. We're gonna take off all the hardware and then put an IOD transfer on the middle. So they're machined, so not super old. But it looks like it's in really good condition. And I think this would be perfect with that new IOD transfer that came out. grab that so definitely worth shopping because with 25% off this was $37.50 you know how somebody sometimes somebody passes and then you see things and you're like all right I see you there every now and then I'll see things that remind me of my dad I'm going to show you on this dresser what reminds me of him this totally looks like my dad's handwriting and my dad did math on anything. So somebody decided to do some math on the inside of this drawer. So I'm gonna leave that there. Just a little reminder of my dad. This is our essential pneumatic spray gun. You can pick them up at Haru Crate. They also have them on Amazon and we'll drop a link below. It's just hooked to our air compressor that we've set at 65 PSI. And I'm going to put an entire pint of the cottage color in crockery in here. I'm gonna make sure I get all the good bits out. All the good bits. Well, the thicker paint is always on the bottom, so that is the good bits. You probably should strain it, but I don't. And then I'm going to add about two tablespoons of water to one pint, and then I'll shake it up. One of the like tips and tricks I have for spraying is there's this little topper. It says clean spray gun after every use, and next to that is this little piece. There's a little hole here. If it's clogged and you're not getting air into your gun, you will not be able to spray. You're going to get like kind of a... Spray. It'll be like a vacuum. Be like a vacuum. So make sure that's clean every time. We like to sometimes use like a little paper clip to clean it out. And then I like to cover that hole. It's got a little arrow. And I'm going to shake it up, cover the hole or else paint will get everywhere. And we'll do a test spray just to make sure it sprays right. Cottage color paint does not have to be sprayed, but I do like to test it out before I use it. Sometimes I just brush it and it works out just fine. It's all natural, it goes great through a sprayer, but if you brush it, it'll still lay flat. So if you're watching this and you're like, I don't feel like spraying, don't feel like you can't use the cottage paint in crockery. It looks amazing, brushed or sprayed. For the paint and products used here today, visit jamierayvintage.com. So while that dresser is finishing drying, I'm coming in here to check on Zepp's progress and it's working pretty good. It, did it line up pretty easy when you matched them? Yeah, so I just kind of, the, the bottom one is actually easiest. This middle one was the most critical because there's two pieces right here that match up together, but I lined those up pretty good. Um, and then this one, there's a drawer separation right where they line up. So it's pretty easy. I just, I'm like eyeballing it. That's why I wanted you to put it like that. So that way that line was where, where the separation was. <laughs> to make it a little easier. So well, it worked out. I yeah. was just winging it, you had a plan, and it came together. Somehow we made it work. So I'm using DIY white wax, and I'm just gonna come in and white wax this hardware. I'll let it sit for a little bit, then wipe it back. And that's just going to make it not quite so harsh. This is such a romantic transfer that I wanted to soften up these handles. They're kind of masculine, but white wax is gonna help. Okay, so I'm just gonna use this paper towel, you can use a lint-free rag, and it just oxidizes that black and softens it, and it looks so good. It sticks down in all the pits. Wipe some more there. there it you sticks go. down in all the pits of the cast iron. 
garbage. Yeah, it's a clear wax that we're putting. So we just put this transfer on here. This is a IOD decor transfer. And the paint has a sealer on it already, but we're gonna seal over the transfer too. Without so wax. that Yeah, so that it can be wipeable and not wear off. And... Well, we painted, we actually went to Hawaii last week. Oh, wow. I mean, we painted this right before we left, but we didn't have time to put this on. So we're finishing it up. Okay, so now that we have the clear wax on, Zeb's gonna put the hardware. I will come back and put a little bit of white wax on the screws and this piece is done. It only took us a few weeks with a Hawaii trip in between. <laughs> but the actual project is might, might have an hour and a half into it, the whole thing. Yeah, so simple with the cottage colors and transfers. Like, it's so nice not to have to seal it. Zeb's gonna bear hug this into the shop. We're moving into the shop because we're gonna lay it flat and put the transfer on the front on our back work table. All right, so Zeb's doing this on the surgery table here, <laughs> otherwise known as the workbench. We just found the center. We're doing that one piece. So it's um, really easy. I just lined this line of the grid up with this center piece here, and then we're gonna drop it down on. So we debated on whether or not to put it on the little indents, but I want it to be continuous. So hopefully I don't regret my choice. We'll Zeb see who's regretting the choice. <laughs> So on this, since this is indented and we're going to try to get the letters and all the flowers to follow that indent in the trim, I'm not pressing this part down yet. I'm going to get this all adhered and then we'll work our way down. So of note, we just sprayed this dresser out there. You guys are watching Jamie. It's been sitting out there maybe 15 minutes. This paint is really fresh and this transfer is easily sticking to it and going. If you're in a humid area, you might need to let it cure a little longer, but it's so dry here in Utah, we're able to just paint and go. Yeah, I was gonna say, make sure you let them know if it's humid, it'll take longer. I mean, technically you wanna wait a couple hours, but ain't nobody got time for that. Gonna crackle and might break the transfer as we go over these curves, and that's okay. It'll just make it look distressed. The, the uh, pattern will be continuous. Almost there. All right, I just want to show you guys that I'm standing on the table <laughs> to get this shot. But sometimes you do what you gotta do, man. Good thing this is a solid work table. <gasps> so pretty. And I love that, I know that it was a pain, but I love that it went continuous. So what we're gonna do is just kind of break it. You're gonna really owe me some garden time. I'm gonna owe you some weed. <laughs> I already weeded a lot. So it's good. we're gonna break it across here um, so it won't be perfect, but it just looks so good. Now Zeb's up on my bar stool. <laughs> Is your finger in the shot? No, my finger's not in the oh. shot. All right, so come close. <laughs> Let's show them. My idea was right. We should have pulled the drawers out and pushed them all together and then had the gaps. Cause look, when we rolled over the top of this one, now this doesn't line up. There's like a quarter inch gap over here somehow. We're not sure like this one got stretched or that one got stretched coming over. We're going to be able to fix it. I think it's going to be okay, but just know when you're doing yours, it might, you know, you might have to like put it all together first and then not have it rolling over this stuff. Maybe cut it out individually. Yeah, I guess you could cut out the strips and then put it in there, but I just wanted it to be continuous. So how are you going to fix my problem? So I'm going to cut this piece here and do a couple little gaps and then we'll distress like it was a cracked frame. Okay. So Zeb cut off this piece of the frame and he put it over here. We're going to see if he can fix it. So the flowers line up, just not the frame. Pretty closely. I might cut these here. Ooh. Oh no, we're almost committed. We're doing surgery. So we're just going to cut it out separately. We're going to make it work. We also cut the words out because those have to be perfect. So we cut those off and we'll put those on here in a little bit. Is it just like lining up here and then not lining up there? Do we need to cut this it's ring off? It's because it rolls. I think we should just cut that separate nope. or do that part of the wreath left that's going to go over here, but I stole a little leaf right here. And I'm just going <laughs> to layer it on. Where there's a will, there's a way. 
boom, like a boss. To distress this piece, I'm just going to use 220 sandpaper and lightly go over the edge. You can also distress the transfer, just make sure that you've pushed it down really well. And if you get any pigment powder from the transfer, just lightly wipe it off and don't smear it on your paint. Even though Cottage Color has a built-in sealer, you always have to seal the transfer. So we just use DIY clear wax over the top. I'm obsessed because look at these hardware. Like, they match the transfer like I planned it. You want to see a grown woman freak out. Watch her uh, get a little bit geeky over some hardware and how much it matches well, the transfer. It's the original hardware. She's like skipping around the job. <laughs> it's the original hardware, and it matches... And I literally just bought this piece yesterday, so I had no idea what I was going to do with it. So I cleared out this space here. I'm hoping that it fits. We'll see. Just a little over the window, but that's all right. Yeah, no, I think that's good. We'll have to move those things in the back. I'll get it all staged up. Buddy, we've been working all day, but two projects are done. It, yeah, and you may have heard some background noise, like the shop's been open, but I actually think it's good if you're working on projects while the shop is open because people can really see like how easy these are to do. The cottage colors transfers match made in heaven. Like so easy to use so the two together. If you need these paint products or these dressers, they're listed at jamierayvintage.com. And if you like this video, be sure to give us a thumbs up and subscribe to Jamie Ray Vintage for more DIY.